What's up guys? I am back with another episode. I am going to be trying out a 3D printed uh, new fishing lure that I designed. You could say a different version of one of the lures I already have out, but I did a little bit of finagling with this one and we'll see how this one works out, see how it swims. Hopefully catch some fish today. Absolutely gorgeous out. It has been one hell of a long winter and I'm just excited to be back out here. I have uh, have a lot to tell you guys. A lot of new stuff came up and I'm excited to share it with you. So while I, uh, while I do some casting, I can uh, tell you guys about what's been going on. This is what I'm gonna be trying out today. It is a smaller version of my, if I can get a hold of it here, of my lipless crankbait. This comes out to, I think it was an inch and a half. I'm pretty sure it's an inch and a half. My original size of the other one is two inches, I believe. I should know that. But uh, basically I'm considering this one like a panfish size, panfish walleye size. Uh, something a little bit smaller that you can pretty much literally catch anything on. At least, at least I'm assuming, you know, this could be good for, eh, it could be good for bluegills, crappie. I'd say perch, especially and uh, of course bass so we are going to try it out today and see if we can do some damage oh that's a fish there we go -hoo -hoo! that is a fish guys that is a fish that thing's kind of taken off i really like this rod i'm actually using a fly rod with a spinning reel and if as you guys can see with that hook set i can load up that rod very well and i like i like doing that and that's something you can't do, you know, with a stiffer rod. You're gonna pull that hook out. Look at that, guys. Been out here for eight and a half minutes, but I've been casting for maybe, what, three minutes? And uh, we got ourselves a freaking bass on this thing. If you got a 3D printer, you can uh, print this one up. I will leave all the STL files linked in the description below. Let's get back to it. Oh, there we go. Oh man, I thought I was snagged. Got another fish on here. We're on probably about 10 minutes here and this is bass number two. Yeah, this one's definitely, definitely a little bit bigger. Let's try to keep this guy a little bit cleaner than the last one. Woo, all right. Look at that. Bass number fricking two here and we're just getting started, hopefully. Catch you later. Wrong way, dude. What are you doing, man? All right, here, I'll give you a little push. Go. There he goes. Dude, what are you doing, man? Come on. Maybe it's a little too cold for him. This water don't seem too bad. Actually, it's warmer than I expected. Did I shock him or what? There he goes. Oh my god. All right, guys, there's another one. <laughs> Dude. Oh my goodness, guys, can you see that? That's what I'm talking about. I might, I'm gonna loosen the drag just a little bit on this one. He, he is tugging. Yeah, this guy's tugging, man. Dude, this guy's got some shoulders on him. Look at that. Dude, first, holy crap. Yeah, this guy's chunky. This guy is chunky. Look at that. That is the first cast. Let me get some sun on him here. Get some, there we go. That is freaking gorgeous. Look at the stomach on him. He's been feeding. I'm gonna try to snap a picture real fast. Where did I? They are definitely liking this little panfish lipless crankbait here. That is the first cast with that perch pattern. That is a 17 inch largemouth bass. The third one. Thanks buddy. Whew. Biggest one yet, right there. I've been uh, trying to tell you guys about this lipless crankbait. I was telling you guys I had a lot to tell you uh, today, and uh, just not really getting a chance. Caught uh, caught three bass so far. I got geese over there honking at me. Don't even, don't even tell me. Come on, come on. That is the next cast. That is another bass, dude. These fish are freaking on fire today. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. 
Oh my goodness. It is almost cast to cast today, guys. This is freaking incredible. This is how to start out the 2019 fishing season right here. Woohoo! Hell yeah. Oh! You guys see that? Or you guys, at least you guys heard it. I'm glad I loosened that drag. They are just smashing this thing, man. They are freaking smashing it. Holy crap. All right, there we go. That is bass number four. This one is uh, definitely smaller than the last one I got, but uh, still, still a really good fighter, man. Sweet. That is awesome. Okay, put him back in. See you, buddy. Okay, that was a bad spot. Did I say it was gorgeous out today? Because it is absolutely freaking gorgeous out. Oh, there's another hit. Son of a bitch. There we go, guys. Whew, these guys are freaking feisty, man. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. See if we can get this guy on shore. Yes, dude, they are freaking nailing this thing. All right, guys. There we go. Bass number five. Let's see if we got some a little bit better lighting here. On the panfish lipless crankbait, we'll get them back in. We are doing pretty good today. I think it's time to switch up the color again. This is probably one of my favorite ones right here. This thing turned out freaking awesome. I love the paint job on that. You got the stripes, you got the eye, and then you got some of that splatter on the bottom. The black with that uh, metallic silver freaking turned out really good. There's this 3D print that you know it looks like a pen or something, and then you put the you put the sharpie right into this you could say apparatus. Quite literally turns it into a freaking airbrush. I was, I was just blown away how well it worked and just the fact of, you know, how portable that is. If you guys are interested in, uh, you know, checking that out to print up or uh, to paint up some lures or to uh, airbrush anything else you could think of, I will uh, leave the links in the comments or the uh, description for that. I believe the designer of that was Mesh Engineer Mike. And uh, looks like he's got some pretty cool stuff on his page, so definitely, definitely check him out. It is uh, a pretty badass way to uh, airbrush uh, your fishing lures. And another thing that I was just blown away by is that they have, uh, Sharpie has the metallic, their metallic series of Sharpies. And it looks freaking awesome on these baits, man, where you get the gold. You got the silver. I think they got like a bronze. Whew, man, you go you go to Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon. Only one downfall I can think of or just something to point out is that if, if you are painting something of decent size, uh, you probably are gonna definitely want to uh, take your time on that. You will get a little winded or lightheaded because uh, you, you're basically uh, using the power of your lungs to blow through that uh, pen-looking apparatus. Even just doing these, you know, smaller lipless crankbaits, I was, you know, you, you could definitely feel you get a little winded. You know, you just got to kind of take your time and stuff. It does take a uh, decent amount of lung power to do it. So, uh, you know, for, for younger kids, that might... Uh, might be a little much for him, but I did not try the mini one out, so maybe that one is easier. I'm not sure. Here we go, right towards shore. Let's see if uh, we can get some action in there. See if there's some bass sitting in that area. Was I right or was I right? <laughs> I do. There we go. Oh, he popped off. That was something smaller. I'm curious if that was uh, a bass or if I actually got a, a panfish with my with the panfish lipless crankbait. Dang it. Um, I wanted to show you guys something else that if you do download this STL file, hopefully I grab them. 
I uh, came up with a uh, paint stencil uh, for this one, which is the first one. Uh, I've been thinking about doing this for a while and it worked pretty good. So if you do download this STL file or uh, this uh, lure, I will include these with it. So when you're painting it up, you would just put it right in there. Uh, of course, it's gonna fit better when there's no hooks or hardware on it. And then you were just gonna use your airbrush, whether it's the Sharpie airbrush or a regular one, you can, uh, you can paint your patterns right on there, which uh, I think is pretty cool. You know, you can stay kind of consistent with it. And uh, of course, you know, you could, uh, you could do different color stripes and then like do a different color eye, which I think I'll have to paint some more up and do that with this design, you know, maybe like a red eye. I think that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. I was pretty, pretty excited to share with you guys, uh, you know, just this new design, uh, this smaller version, you know, this is something that you could fish, you know, almost anywhere. Uh, the size of it uh, gives you the, uh, what's the right word? I don't know if you could say flexibility to catch anything, you know, from, from uh, panfish to bass. You know, so I think this is a, a good all around lure. And as you guys can see, as you guys seen today, I've caught uh, five bass on it and uh, missed two so far. So having some pretty good luck with this thing. Very, very happy with it. This is something you can 3D print up. Uh, you could uh, print yourself the paint stencils so you have a uh, you know kind of a starter pattern for it so it's not you know you're not just uh, going at it alone um, as I said in many of my other videos I'm not the best with an airbrush and that's you know that's something that kind of deterred me from uh, airbrushing because I'm like you know what just it I try to I try to paint lures and then they just come out looking like garbage <laughs> and of course you know the more you do it the better you're gonna get but uh, that's why I thought this uh, the paint stencil, you know, is a great way just to get some basic shape and eyes to it. It can look halfway decent even if you don't know how to airbrush. And on top of that, on top of that, if you guys don't even have an airbrush, but you have a 3D printer, you can literally print up a freaking airbrush and throw a sharpie in there, and you can paint your freaking lures. That is freaking awesome. I mean, just think about that. You do not need all those uh you know i don't know containers of paint you don't need an air compressor which that's another thing you know it's loud and noisy i mean i guess i'm just uh really just talking some shit about airbrushing right now but it does get the job done obviously but just how simple and convenient it is to be able to airbrush with a sharpie and just how portable it is too. basically go anywhere with you you could be out here right now pr painting up some new patterns Another one, feels like he's gonna jump. There he goes. Ha, another one, hell yeah. Ah, I love how you can load up that rod. You can actually set the hook on this thing and not be worried you're gonna pull his freaking tongue out. Not too bad. Woo -hoo. That, that is freaking gorgeous. I love that color of uh, the lipless crankbait. That is freaking sweet, that the black with that silver. That is bass number six. First one on the black. First one on the black with the uh, silver stripes and a little bit of paint splatter on the bottom. I like that. All right, thanks, buddy. See you later. Woo! Oh, there he is. There we go. There we go. <laughs> ah, damn it, he popped again. All right, all right. These guys are. He's like, these guys are getting a little smart on me now. They are throwing that hook. Dude, this is freaking nuts. This is freaking nuts. I got another one on. Okay. I'm not going to horse him. I'm not going to horse him like I kind of have been. Okay. We'll just take my time. Taking my time. Yep. There you go. Spit it again. That's all right, though. I did keep pressure on him, and I didn't horse it. There we go. He freaking hit it. He hit it. Hoo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, baby. Oh my goodness. That's how we do it. That is how we do it. Oh my goodness. I can't even, I don't even know. This is either seven or eight bass today. Freaking nuts. Not huge, not huge at all, but super fun. Come on. I cannot believe this. Just slaying them on this thing. See you, buddy. 
I was casting this way as you guys seen and I missed a couple bass. You know, ah, damn it, he popped again. You know, where they are popping off. And I'm like, well, there's no way these fish are gonna hit again. So what I did here, I was recently watching one of Tactical Bassin's uh, videos about uh, fishing swim baits. And he was talking about this technique that he would use that if he had a hit and he loses a fish, you know, so after after that, you know, your your odds of catching that same fish, I think, dramatically go down. Uh, so what he was saying to do, if this if were to happen, like just what happened to me, but with a lipless crankbait, you would throw it back out there, and once you get to, into that general area, you would absolutely you would just rip you would just rip that bait like super fast. Okay, I didn't I didn't do it that fast as how he described it, but. I I sped up my retrieve in that general area and I freaking got hit. I freaking got hit. So that uh it actually worked twice for me where uh it got me bit. I caught that one the last bass with that technique. So thank you Tactical Bassin. I will uh I'll have to leave that uh that video down below. He was kind of saying that uh it's uh like a territorial thing, you know, like they they can't just they can't resist you know you you see that bait and it's like it's like fleeting it's like running and uh the bass just can uh can't resist and they freaking clobber it i did try go walleye fishing a couple weeks ago uh up at our cottage we were uh, picking up my brother um from college and we were gonna stay at our cottage but uh due to some oh i don't know if i missed one Due to some major flooding on the Mississippi, we couldn't get to the cottage. So that was that was kind of a drag. We had to rent a hotel. And, uh, you know, I tried to do some fishing. And uh, it was just tough. It was tough. Everything was flooded. Well, what you guys see uh, behind me, right all in there, that would be a big old parking lot. And completely, completely underwater. Oh, something just jumped. I did snag uh, a carp which I was hoping was a giant walleye, but nope. There we go. Hopefully it's not a big old carp. I snagged uh, some kind of, I don't know what that is. Don't tell me that's an Asian carp. It was a freaking carp. Is that a fish? Oh, yep, that's another fish. That is another fish. That's exactly where, uh, I I just seen that jump that I showed you guys. This has to be like bass number eight today. This is just it couldn't get any better. It could not get any better. That is seven or eight. Really have lost track. This is on the gold, and uh, yeah, it is pink. It is it is pink. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I was going for a red color, but. Did not really show up like that. All right, sweet. Get this guy back in. See ya. About this particular color, this uh, this gold, and it, it's supposed to be red. I had this stick bait. Okay, so we're talking we're talking over ten years ago now, which is pretty crazy. Uh, back when I was in high school, we were fishing a uh, pond. Oh my God! There's another fish. That is another fish. This thing frickin' stomped it. Holy crap, guys. This thing is frickin' wild. You see that rod bend? It is just going frickin' nuts. <laughs> oh my god. That is bass number a lot. Yeah, and that this is the color I was talking about. Okay, so what I was saying about this particular color, I had this bait, this stick bait that was gold and it had a red eye, all right? And uh, we are fishing this pond we are may, may or may not have, should have been fishing at. We are doing a little night operation, just uh, middle of summer, you know, just still hot, you know, so pretty hot out, probably 80 degrees or so. And uh, we go fishing at this, uh, this pond and it, it had to be one of the best, uh, fishing 
outings that I've ever had. It was it was insane. It was crazy. We probably caught like 30 bass a piece. It was just nonstop. And on top of that, it was at it was at night. It was at night. I've never ever in my life have ever replicated or came close to uh, catching that many fish at night. It was just one after another. And I was slaying them on, like I said, it was this gold with, uh, with a red eye uh, stick bait. So uh, that's, that's basically what I was trying to duplicate there. I will have to get something that is a little more close to red instead of pink. But uh, as you guys can see, uh, it is still, still producing pretty good. Is that a fish? Got something, here we go. I think I got something smaller here. Okay, what do we got? Oh, I think it is a bass, all right, yep. <laughs> yep, that's definitely a bass. He got some air, man. For how small he is, there he goes. Dude, this thing, when he gets bigger, when he's a five, five pound fish, man, he's gonna be jumping like free willy. Hooked himself really well. He got one in the back, and then very nice hook set right in the corner of the mouth there. All right, see ya, buddy. Woo. Uh, so if you guys are interested in 3D printing this up, I believe I printed this at 80% fill. Uh, being that it is a smaller lure, it will print decently fast. You know, maybe maybe about an hour print, so not too bad if you're looking to print a couple up. Uh, I would have to say for layer heights, you could do you could do anywhere between like a 0.1 to a 0.15 layer heights. And I think that'll be just fine. As you guys seen, it has been a hell of a day today. Caught, I'm gonna have to say close to 10 bass today on uh, my new design. It is the panfish size lipless crankbait. Hopefully you guys uh, try this out. Please try this out. You can download and print this thing for free if you have a 3D printer. So make sure to check out the links below. It will be on Thingiverse. On top of that, I showed you guys the uh, the paint stencil. So even if you guys don't know how to uh, airbrush very well, just like me, uh, this will the stencil will help you out to get like a basic pattern. As you guys can see, I got the stripes and just uh, the eye on there. So definitely, definitely just a good good place to get you started with the airbrushing. And uh, also with with that being said about airbrushing. I will leave the link to that Sharpie airbrush. I was just blown away with how well it worked. I would definitely, de definitely recommend trying it out. I just remember this, I forgot to mention. I did try putting a clear coat on this. Uh, what was it? It was some kind of clear coat enamel. And when I did that, it, uh, it didn't work with the Sharpie, like it uh, it didn't react very well, where the color started like just dripping off the crankbaits. As you can see the difference between the one I did spray and the one I did not spray yet, and uh, not a big fan, it actually uh, makes it look worse. So I would recommend not trying uh, a clear coat out of a spray can or maybe try something different than what I used. But what did work, was a UV epoxy, uh, which basically I dipped it and then you can either put it outside in the UV lights or you can just put it in, in front of some UV lights and then it, uh, and then it cures up uh, pretty hard. It worked out pretty good with that stuff. I didn't have any issues with the, uh, with the UV epoxy. It has been a great start to the 2019 fishing season. Uh, you know, if you guys are thinking about getting the 3D printer, getting into uh, 3D printing your own fishing lures. I think this is the year to do it. The uh, printers are getting cheaper and cheaper and uh, the stuff you can do with these things are freaking amazing. As you guys can see, it produced some fish today, a lot of fish, it worked very well. And uh, hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully you guys try it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up or I will throat punch you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Philip DeFranco. I was watching one of his videos and he's like, make sure to give this video a like or I will throw punch you. And uh, the next video he's like, yeah, I'll, I threaten you guys and uh, my likes 
uh, triple. What a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Before we jump into it, remember, hit that like button, otherwise I'm going to punch you in the throat. I'm not really going to do it, but for some reason when I threaten you with physical violence, I get two to three times more likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I try to put out a new video every single week, especially with the nicer weather that we are now having. I should be putting out some more videos, so make sure to hit that bell notification so you know when I put out a new video and there was something else i was going to tell you guys what else was i going to tell you guys oh yes you could also sign up for my first fishing friday newsletter i put out a monthly newsletter with some fishing news and updates about my company i think you guys would really enjoy it and uh you know you Get, uh, get links to all my you know new fishing lures and videos and stuff like that so uh, the link will be in the description page below we'll see you guys in the next episode see ya